Bristol Myers, the makers of Sal Hepatica, famous laxative, and Minute Rub, modern chest rub, brings you Duffy. <laughs> Duffy's where the elite meet the eat, Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Uh, well, tonight, Duffy, we really got a big shot. Bing Crosby. Crosby. C R C R O S B. You know the guy, Duffy, the straight man in the Bob Hope pictures. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Bob Crosby's older brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the crooner with the four sons. Huh? Was Bing always a crooner? Uh, no, he studied singing for eight years before he found out he couldn't sing. But uh, by that time, it was too late. He was too famous to quit. <laughs> huh? Hey, Duffy, why don't you sell Bing a half an interest in the joint here? No kidding. Well, a guy like that could help us with the labor shortage. Huh. He grows his own bus boys. <laughs> huh? Mrs. Duffy wants to meet Bing? What for? But Duffy, what could he use her for? She's too big for a sarong and too slow for the track. <laughs> huh? Well, I'll talk to Bing about the partnership, Duffy. Okay. So long. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Duffy's. Come on in and meet Finnegan, Eddie the Waiter, Miss Duffy, Paul Weston and his orchestra, our special guest tonight by courtesy of Kraft, Bing Crosby, and Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Hey, Eddie, did you hear? Uh, Bing Crosby might uh, buy a half interest in this place. What? Bing Crosby? The one that wears them shirts? Yeah. The one with the four sons? Yeah. The one with them race horses? Yeah. He's going to buy half interest in this place? Yeah. Well, I suppose he just don't care anymore. <laughs> Listen, Eddie, with good management, this place could show a very nice overhead. Uh, <clears throat> uh, especially with the uh, new floor show that I wrote for Crosby. Oh, you, you wrote it, huh? Yeah, I wrote it. It's uh, going to have the same uh, flavor as his radio show. Yeah. He's on a cheese program, ain't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good, huh? <laughs> Let's see now. Uh, uh, it's uh, Trudy Irwin, uh, John Trotskotter. Uh, yeah. Carp Kempenter. Yeah, Carp. Uh, yeah, and that Yuki, uh... Uh, oh, who's going to be Yuki? You? Oh, no, I'm too statuesque. <laughs> uh, oh, for the part of Yuki, I, I got to get a guy that's very short and a little stupid. Uh, uh what? Hiya, Finnegan. Hmm. Uh, not quite short enough, huh? Uh, no, but he's a little more stupid, so it comes out even. <laughs> uh, Finnegan, how would you like to be an actor? To an actor? Oh, boy. I got me to him. I got you, D. I got you, Oh, oh, that thing. Oh, oh, oh. Just, I got just a minute, Finnegan. Finnegan, calm. Finnegan. 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 calm yourself. Finnegan. Stop it, will you? Uh, uh. Finnegan, look, I don't... I don't mean a song and dance man. I mean a comedian. Oh, a comedian? Yeah. Dude, Arch, I got a good joke. Dude, why does your fireman wear red suspenders? Why? To get on the other side. Finnegan, I'm afraid your humor is a little too delicate for this show. <laughs> oh, oh. Everything happens to me. <laughs> Miss Duffy, will you please stop with that noise? Well, what's wrong with my voice? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. But how can you yell like that with nobody beating you? <laughs> hmm. My singing teacher says I have perfect pitch. Well, you may have perfect pitch, but if you start singing around here, you better learn how to catch. 
<laughs> What's this about the singing teacher, anyhow? Oh, you remember my old singing teacher, Yasha Panyaslavnik. Yeah. Good old walk-up one-flight Yasha. I thought he was in the army. They wouldn't take him. Why not? Puncture the eardrums. Oh. <laughs> and I'll bet you that you're the one that 4 f the guy. So he's trying to teach you again, huh? Yeah, he has a new method now. The O-P-A method. He says all you have to remember when singing is O-P-A. O-P-A. Yeah. Open, please, the adenoid. <laughs> oh, boy. You just wait till Bing Crosby hears me. Now, listen, Miss Duffer. When Crosby gets here, if you open one crummy adenoid... <laughs> to get the guy to buy a half an interest from your father. Oh, Papa's partner. Hmm, that's, uh, very interesting. Miss Duffy, he's buying an interest only in a joint. You still belong to Daddy. <laughs> Besides, the guy is married. That's the trouble. Papa always has to have partners that are married. Uh, what other partner has is married? Mama. <laughs> Harry Von Zell. Yes, Listen, Lord, talk to me, please, will you, before I completely retain my sanity? <laughs> Just say anything so it makes some sense. Huh? Well, I know something that makes sense, Arch, a lot of sense. Then go ahead, Harry, please. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you never know what the morning will bring you, do you? Never know, for instance, when you may wake up feeling dull and headachy due to the need of a laxative. And so it certainly pays you to remember this. When you do wake up feeling like that, it isn't necessary to put off taking that laxative till bedtime, no matter what your plans may be. Simply take Sal Hepatica at once. For then speedy Sal Hepatica brings very gentle relief, usually within an hour. So you can see you no longer have to wait till night to take the laxative needed in the morning, and consequently no longer have to risk going through the whole day feeling out of sorts. And don't forget, this famous saline has an additional advantage. Sparkling Sal Hepatica also helps sweeten an upset stomach by helping to reduce excess gastric acidity. So sometime soon, tonight if you can, stop at your drugstore for an economical bottle of Sal Hepatica. Remembering this, caution use only as directed, then any time you know you need a laxative, morning, noon, or night. See if you don't feel better faster when you take gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. <laughs> Let me see. I got to figure out what this business worth. Uh, Eddie, uh, how many new customers uh, would you say come in this place tonight? Uh? tonight let me see. Uh, one, two, three. And, and here comes number four on the outside, Bing Crosby. Out of the money again. Uh -huh. Thank you. Well, Bing, welcome to Duffy's. How do you like the joint here? Frankly, Archie, it warms the cockles of this peripatetic old troubadour's palpitator to find himself so unostentatiously ensconced within the sacred precincts of this Tanglefoot Emporium. <laughs> oh. He pops out with them syllables like they were sons. <laughs> Of course, I personally don't mind them big words, you know, but it ain't fair to people who don't understand them, you know? Like who? Like you. <laughs> well, leave us lay off. Oh. Now, if you want to use big words, uh, I'll match your vocabulary. I'll match you any time. Okay, Archie, a truce, huh? Right. Now, how do you like the joint here, briefly? Stinks. <laughs> You don't have to be that briefly. <laughs> well, your old man was down here last week. He liked the place. Oh, yeah. Well, Pop always was a dive man. <laughs> old Tanker Crosby, they used to call him. <laughs> Up in the Northwest. But... But by the way, he was a little embarrassed, Archie. He says he came away without paying his check. Oh, well, tell the old gentleman to forget it. We'll add it on to yours. I... <laughs> uh, Eddie, uh, get Mr. Crosby a steak, uh, by the way, a 20 center. He can afford it. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> by the way, Bing, your old man was saying how, uh, how, how nice you sound. You, you know, how you all get along in your family. Oh, yeah, Arch. We'd give each other the shirt off our backs. <laughs> and you still get along, huh? <laughs> mm. Archie, are you knocking this creton creation that I'm affecting? 
to the number. Look, Crosby, in this neighborhood, there's 59 guys with lead pipes that's just looking for somebody with them creton cretations <laughs> like that. <laughs> Too sharp for you, huh? Uh, yeah, it's a little sharp. You see, now, now take me for contrast. Take the way I dress. Do you, you see these pants? Mm-hmm. Used to be part of a whole suit. Right? <laughs> you see, it's quiet. Good taste. Uh, made out of genuine herring bones. Herring, huh? Yeah. The knees look a little marinated, I thought. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and now take my shirt, you know? Look at it. Simple, not a bit ostentatious, you know? You got a cute idea there, too, that uh, having the collars and the cuffs trimmed in black. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, landlady must have forgotten to turn them over this week. Uh. <laughs> they coming up for Mr. Crosby. Just a second. Is that a steak? Yeah. Put a couple of bucks on it to win, will you? <laughs> Now, if I was you, I'd just play at the show. <laughs> Eddie, maybe you better scratch it. <laughs> hey, I'd... Uh, hey, I'd like to meet Mr. Crosby. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, Mr. Finnegan, Mr. Crosby. Mr. Finnegan. Uh, Mr. Crosby, I'm glad to meet you. Uh, you know, I've been told that my voice sounds just like yours. <laughs> Who told you that? Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Oh, and uh, Bing, this is Miss Duffy. Uh, her uh, voice also sounds sound like yours. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, Mr. Crosby, uh, after all the pictures you made with Dorothy Ramore, it must be quite a shock for you to see a girl with her clothes on. <laughs> well, I, I was shocked when I saw you, but I wasn't sure just what did it. <laughs> uh, did you like that surround with Mr. Lamore when you first saw it? Oh, I never gave it a second thought. Oh, you didn't? I was a little busy with the first thought. <laughs> Well, I think it's indecent. I wouldn't be seen wearing so little. You've got a lot more to cover than Lamore. <laughs> Archie, I have a lovely figure. Last week, Mr. Crosby's father's eyes nearly popped out. Oh, you met Dad, huh? Yeah, and he certainly is fine looking for a man of 40. Would you <laughs> hit me with that again? What was that? <laughs> he told me he was 40 years old. About uh, 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> I bet you it was a lie about his etchings, too. What did you do to my... What? 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 Uh, look, Miss Duffy, uh, would you mind answering the phone? It isn't ringing. It will. Give it time. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Bing, I, I want to talk a little business to you. All right. Uh, how long you been on that radio show of yours? Mm, around 15 years. 15 years. Bing, you're in a rut. <laughs> Now, look, leave us be taste. What are we going to be? Uh, <clears throat> taste. Oh, oh. Uh, how would you like to buy a half interest in Duffy's? Buy half of this place? Archie, I already own two stables. <laughs> Bing, are you calling this place a stable? I was only kidding. I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's different. Just Ain't been a horse in here for years. <laughs> now, look, Bing... <laughs> As a restaurant man... But, Archie, I'm, I don't... I really don't know anything about the restaurant business. I... Well, you don't have to. When you buy half of Duffy's, you buy half of me. Half of you? You say there hasn't been a horse in here in years? No. <clears throat> you see, uh, Bing, uh, I'm included in Duffy's half of the deal, and uh, I'm a fixture here, what they call the lock stock. What about the barrel? That's Mrs. Duffy. <laughs> now, Bing, with the floor show that I got in mind... Uh, excuse me a minute. Hello? Hello, Duffy. Yeah, he's here. Huh? I just told him about it. Okay, uh, Bing, the uh, other half of the barrel. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, uh, Mr. Duffy. Well, I haven't met you, but I, I've seen your picture in the window, and in my... Uh, what'd you say? Do I think you look like Hope? No, I think you look a little more like Charity. <laughs> I de what'd you say? A half interest in your place. Well, I'm half interested... How much do you want for it? Hmm? You think I'm made of money? 300 bucks? <laughs> Give me the phone. Look, Duffy, don't be a robber. Huh? Well, about 200. 
Well, with Crosby singing here, I'll bet you no time to join is worth at least 800. Huh? Why should you sell half of a business that's going to be worth 800 for 200? Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh... <laughs> maybe if I explain to him how much business he'll bring in, he'll be willing to come up a little. Huh? Am I sure he'll sing? Well, if he's a partner, I don't see how you can stop him. Huh? Uh, first, you want to what? You want to what? I'll tell him. Bing. <laughs> Duffy would like an audition. What do you mean? Me audition for that bum? Please, Bing, you're speaking of your partner. If the bum wants an audition, give it to him. <laughs> uh, cool, some uh, music for Mr. Crosby, please. <laughs> What'd you think of him? Mm-hmm. Mm. You'd rather have a silent part. <laughs> well, look, Duffy, uh, give him another chance. Uh, listen to him once more on this uh, floor show that I wrote. Huh? Okay, Duffy. Hey, Arch, did I hear you say that you wrote a floor show? Yep, thing, and if Duffy likes it, you're in. Now, how do I get out? <laughs> Hey, uh, Mr. Crosby, uh, you look sort of pale. Mm -hmm. uh, there are seven of you Crosbys, aren't there? Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, maybe you're the one. The one what? The one person out of every seven who this time of year usually suffers from a cold. <laughs> you know, Bing, if you had one more brother, we might have stopped him dead. <laughs> Yeah, but how then would we know what to do about that coal? So proceed with the good word, my good man. Well, thank you, Mr. Crosby. <laughs> if cold symptoms are making you miserable, ladies and gentlemen, your nose is stuffed up and there's that aching feeling in your muscles, the good word is Minute Rub. To help get relief quickly and easily, simply massage Minute Rub, modern chest rub, on your back and chest. Yes, that's all you do. And soon, in fact, even before you've finished, you'll feel a comforting sensation of warmth as Minute Rub gets to work, begins to soothe the discomfort and tightness caused by your cold. And at the same time, Minute Rub's active menthol vapors help relieve that congested feeling in your nose and throat. No need to worry about Minute Rub harming your clothes or linens. It's greaseless and it's stainless, too. So get after your cold symptoms with this nationally famous chest rub that takes only a minute to use that helps bring such quick relief. 
Minute Rub, M-I-N-I-T-R-U-B, Minute Rub. Show. Miss Duffy Finnegan, you got your parts? Archie, I, I, I just can't go through with this. Why not, Bing? Well, I've read your script, and I don't like to do tragedies. <laughs> this ain't no tragedy. Nobody's going to get killed. You can have eight to five. <laughs> Look, Bing, don't worry about it. Now, let's go. Uh, well, ready, everybody? Uh, music, clap please. Clap Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the old Duffy Music Hall. This is your announcer, Ken Archie. And uh, we now present yours truly, Bing, call up the glue factory, Crosby. (laughs) Now, take it, Bing, and uh, stick to the script. Greetings and salutations to the old Duffy Music Hall, where we gather to. Archie, is that the end of the sentence? Of course. Wouldn't think of splitting up an infinitive. <laughs> Continue. Now that the Yuletide of Christmas is behooven upon us in three more semesters, and wherefore which in this Christmas purchasing season of gifts from one's fellow man to another, leave us be mindful in our Xmas shopping <laughs> of the immoral words of shape. <laughs> the... Oh, Archie, I I can't do it. Can't handle it. Can't do it. Go ahead. Read it. The quality of Macy's is not strange. (laughs) The play on words. Great. Uh, Great. Come on. Uh, Let's uh, let's go on with the show now. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, good evening, Bing. Well, if it ain't our comedian. Hello, Jerky. Jerky. (laughs) See, Archie, shouldn't this be Yuki? Take a look at him. Hmm. Hello, Jerky. Why were you riding in the park yesterday, side saddle? Uh, side saddle. Oh, uh, because it was a female horse. <laughs> Hello, Duffy. You didn't get that joke? Well, it don't make no difference, Duffy. Any joke about Bing's horses is a belly laugh. Why? I don't know. Maybe on account of they run on their bellies. <laughs> Okay, Duffy, on with the show. Uh, uh, say, Ben. Yes, Jackie? Uh, you got four sons, ain't you? Yes. Uh, and Eddie Cantor's got five daughters, ain't Indeed. he? Indeed. So why don't you have your four sons marry Cantor's five daughters? But, Jerky, there would be one girl left over. Well, somebody's got to take care of Jessel's mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great dialogue, huh, Bing? I say great dialogue, huh, Bing? We now stop for station indemnification. (laughs) Eddie? Okay, Bing, take it. Well, once again, we're back in the good old Duffy Music Hall, the year 1912. Maybe perhaps you remember. The horse car just replaced the cotton gin. Teddy Roosevelt had just climbed up Sam Wom's hill. (laughs) And ladies' fashions were changing, too. The wedgie was fast replacing the bustle. You better take this, Archie. Uh, (laughs) Uh, okay. Yes, in 1912, uh, people in the street were singing an old ballad, which went... Uh, down, down the old ox road. road. So you'll never find out where it is by looking at maps? By looking on the maps. <laughs> With a little investigation, you'll discover little perhaps... Little that this old tradition's out of place is just a proposition <laughs> called the old, old ox road. I caught you in the stretch. <laughs> the old... Road. Ah, yeah, the old ox road. How well I remember it. 
Takes me right back to good old North Virginia. Away, uh, down the ah, the strong. good old South. River what far, memories? Far. Magnolia blossoms frothing in the moonlight. <laughs> Little verandas running around the house. <laughs> yes, there was 12 of us little chitlins. Uh, yes, I remember. Grandfather sitting, rocking on his old family retainer. <laughs> yeah. Drinking them mint junipers. <laughs> ah, the South. Take it, Bing. Ah, the South. How well I remember my mammy and pappy. Sitting by the old gin of spitting cotton. <laughs> Bing. That spinning cotton. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mammy and Pappy spinning cotton. Mammy did the woofs and Pappy did the warps. And there they sat. Mammy all woofed and Pappy all warped. <laughs> and then there was my little southern belle, Scarlett O'Delphi. Hello, Rick. Hello, Scarlett. You ready yet? I'm all set. Got my bag, Lulu Bet? You bet. Come, Pat. But I ain't at. You have a crumb, Pat. Now I'm set. Well, let's get Coming, Rick. Nice modulation. Oh, good. Should have modulated them trumpet players. <laughs> Bing, uh, I'll bet you never had no stuff like that on your program, huh? No, a leopard gets better spots than this. <laughs> When does this thing finish? Uh, you're coming to your finish now. You ain't just whacking your rack either, Jack. <laughs> and now we close the old Duffy Music Hall as a soft swell poop of the horizon reach the dusk of a new equinox. Waits for and we hear... me and the blue of her eyes meets the gold Hello, Duffy. How'd you like it? Putrid, huh? <laughs> well, Duffy, is it my fault if Crosby can't act? <laughs> well, how about the deal? Huh? Has he got the money with him? Probably why. Tell him what? Duffy, I think it would be nicer if I told him to buy war bonds with it. <laughs> Okay, I'll handle it. Uh, hold the phone, uh, Bing. Uh, yes? Bing, uh, you see, uh, Duffy's kind of attached to this place. Oh, you mean the, the deal is off? Yeah. Archie! Bing. Now look what you did, Duffy. This is the first time I was ever kissed by a crooner. <laughs> Folks, it's about time to leave Duffy's for the evening, but before we go, we want you to know that Bing Crosby is soon to be seen in the Paramount picture, Going My Way. Right, old Bing. <laughs> Let's all meet here again next week when our guests will be Dinah Shore and Joan Davis. And in the meantime, if you have a cold... Remember Minitrub. If you need a laxative... Remember Salopatica. And if you have a half hour next Tuesday evening at this same time, remember... Duffy's, where do you late me to eat, aren't you? The man just speaking. Yeah, Duffy, that's right. Next week, uh, Dinah Shaw and uh, Joan Davis. Yeah, Duffy. Bride and Grim. Yeah. <laughs> so long. <laughs>